Hello pre-calc teachers, my name is Matt and I'm a math teacher in residence at NumWorks. In this video, I'm going to introduce the NumWorks calculator and demonstrate how it can enhance your classroom experience. For those of you new to NumWorks, the NumWorks calculator was made by teachers for teachers. You can now spend less time troubleshooting and more time engaging with your students. In addition to the handheld calculator that is approved for all AP exams, as well as the SAT and ACT, NumWorks also provides a free online calculator and mobile apps. Not only are these great for classroom presentations, but they also provide your students with continuous access to the calculator. Today, I'll be using the online calculator, and I invite you to join me on your handheld calculator or by navigating to NumWorks dot com slash simulator. The NumWorks graphing calculator utilizes a familiar app-based interface. There are five apps relevant to the AP Precalculus course. The calculation app is great for calculating values in mathematical notation exactly like on your paper with results displayed in exact and decimal form. In the grapher application you can construct beautiful graphs in the perfect viewing window and easily find key points. In the equation application, you can solve any equation with the press of a button. In the regression application, you can create scatter plots of data and find models to represent the data. In the sequence application, you can use templates to help students build sequences and explore graphs and tables. Let's dig into these apps. The first application we will look at is our Grapher application. The Grapher app is split into three tabs as seen on the top, Expressions, Graph, and table. To plot a graph, we must first add an expression in the Expressions tab. Click OK to add an element. You can start typing here right away or go over to Use a Template. Pressing OK on Use a Template, you will see many templates are available. With the Grapher app, you can plot the graphs of functions, some implicit expressions, points, conics, inequalities, and parametric and polar curves. To start, let's look at two functions. We'll graph the function f of x equals x squared minus 13 and g of x equals 3x minus 5. Notice when using the function template that the template has changed to g of x. To view the graph of these functions, navigate down to plot graph. The auto zoom feature was engineered to provide a display that best showcases interesting characteristics of a graph including the x-intercepts, intersections, and extrema. You can adjust the window using the axes menu or use navigate to move around the graph. You can also use the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out. Right away, we can trace a graph using the left and right arrow keys. Notice the x and f of x values in the bottom banner. As we trace, we can navigate to points of interest. We can see the zeros, intercepts, and extrema. Use the up or down keys to move between the functions. Pressing OK or your toolbox on a function is going to provide you with more options. We can jump to an X or F of X value, find features and values, and even access the options. Let's jump to F of X equals negative 9. Here you can see F of X equals negative 9 at negative 2. Is that the only place where F of X equals negative 9? Use your right arrow to find the other value. Press the back arrow to get out of this and OK again to get back into the menu. Now let's go into our Find menu. X given Y is what we just did, but you can focus in on intersections, max, mins, or zeros. For example, press OK on zeros. Here you will see that we are right on a zero. No left bound, right bound, just on it. We can also quickly navigate to the other zero. Let's take a look at the Table tab by using the up arrow key to move to the tabs. The Table tab shows values of f of x and g of x for given x values. We can set the interval for x by navigating up to set the interval. Or you can type an x value directly into the table. So if we want to see what f of x and g of x are when x equals 100, simply type 100 into the x column of the table and we will see f of x is 9987, and g of x is 295. The last thing we will look at in the Grapher app is some of the advanced graphing. Let's create a polar graph. We are going to add a third expression. You do not have to change modes to graph functions, polar, and parametric equations. Navigate down to the polar template and press OK. Let's add coefficients to create r1 of theta equals 
three cosine of four theta. One thing that is important to note is that if you accidentally delete theta, the XNT key will default to theta in a polar template. Let's go look at the graph. Navigate down to the polar graph and use the plus button to zoom in. Then you can trace values of theta. Input pi to jump two values of theta. Next, let's head to the calculation app. Within the calculation app, you can perform a variety of computations. From the home screen, we can open the calculation app by clicking OK. Let's all start with a simple calculation. Let's add one half and two thirds. We'll press one and then the division key. Notice we automatically get the vertical fraction notation. Now we input two. To get out of the denominator, we'll use the right arrow key. Now we add two divided by three and hit the execute key. Our calculation is now viewable in the calculation history. Notice that we receive both the exact result in fraction form and the decimal approximation. If we instead evaluate 18 divided by 4, we again receive the fraction and decimal form, but here our notation is different. Instead of using the approximately equal to symbol, like in our first computation, we have exactly equal to. This demonstrates two major features of the NumWorks graphing calculator. First, mathematical fidelity. We place an emphasis on making sure our tool accurately represents the mathematics. 7 sixth is approximately equal to 1.1667, but 9 divided by 2 is exactly equal to 4.5. Second, discoverability. You could use a function that's hidden deep in a menu to convert between decimal and fractional form. A better tool would figure out automatically what is likely to be relevant to the user. This idea of pushing information to the user instead of them having to pull it out is a key benefit to using the NumWorks graphing calculator. As another example, let's evaluate the square root of 80. We see the exact simplest radical form 4 square root 5 and the decimal approximation. This also works with trig expressions. Let's evaluate sine of 2 pi over 3. Notice that we are in radian mode as indicated by the rad in the top left corner. If needed, you can change to degree mode in the settings application. Once again, we are provided with the exact and decimal approximation. We can actually obtain additional results to this computation. If we navigate up into the calculator history, you'll notice three dots at the end of the line. This opens up our additional results, that is, other relevant values for our calculation. Calculations involving trig will include a graph of the unit circle, the angle in radians and degrees, and also the cosine, sine, and tangent values for that angle when you scroll down. Using the back key, we return to the calculator editor. Using your shift key will provide you access to even more operations. You may notice that we have the computer science abbreviations for arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. For example, using shift and then the sine button allows you to take the inverse sine of a number. Let's compute arc sine of 1 divided by 2. Using shift and the e to the x button allows you to quickly create vectors and matrices. The matrix 1, 2, 2, 3 can be raised to the negative 1 power to find the inverse. Another powerful tool is the var key. This allows you to access stored expressions, functions, and more. For example, since we have the functions f of x and g of x defined in the grapher, you can compute f of g of 4 in the calculation app. You can also create stored functions in the calculation app. For example, sine of x could be stored as h of x. To store, use shift and the x to the y power key, and h is alpha cosine. Now we can find this in our var key as well. You can also delete functions, so let's go ahead and delete h of x. The toolbox key houses all the other operations you'll need that are not directly on the keyboard. If we press the toolbox key directly under the OK button, you'll find the absolute value, nth root, and log base a operations, as well as additional operations that are organized in convenient categories like calculus and probability. Additionally, trig functions can be found in the toolbox. Let's navigate down to trigonometry. 
Here in the advanced section, we can locate the reciprocal trig functions as well as their inverses. Now let's head over to the equation application. With the equation app, you can solve equations. Within the equations app, you can use our keys to start typing an equation right away. Let's solve the equation 3x minus 8 equals 23. To input this, type 3, and then you can use the XNT key for x, minus 8, and then we'll use shift pi for the equals to 3. To solve the equation, navigate down to solve the equation. We see our solution as an exact fraction and decimal approximation. These can be copied and pasted, and they can be stored. You can also use your stored functions to solve function equations. For example, maybe we want to know when f of x minus g of x equals 0. For advanced equations, sometimes you may need to change or edit the interval of solution search. For example, let's solve the sine of x equals 0. Here you can see that this equation has a ton of solutions. Currently, 10 solutions are displayed, and you can change the interval that is searched in the search interval menu. Navigate up and press OK. Let's search the interval from 0 to 4 pi. This application can be a great way for students to check their work or gain back valuable time on the calculator active section of their final exams. The next app that we will take a look at is the regression application. With the regression app, you can display a scatter plot, plot a regression model, view a residual plot, and make predictions. Just like with the Grapher app, this app is organized into tabs. The first tab is where we can input our data. Let's add some data for x1 and y1. Once your data is entered, navigate to the graph tab to view the scatter plot. Right now we just have a scatter plot, but let's say we wanted to add a regression line onto our scatter plot. We can use the OK button, or we could scroll up to regression so that we could turn on a regression model that we like. For instance, let's turn on linear regression in the form y equals mx plus b. Using the navigation keys, you can move to each data point. If you hit the up and down arrow keys, you can move to the regression model and see the predicted output. Our predicted y value at x equals 21 would be y hat equals 66.37. You will also notice the equation for the linear model is given. Use the toolbox key to jump back into the regression menu. Here you can change your regression model, see regression equation, correlation, create a residual plot, and you can determine predicted values using the regression menu. Let's look at our residuals to determine if this model is the best fit for our data. Since we have a pretty random looking residual plot, we know our linear model is our best model. The last app we're going to take a look at is the Sequences app. This app is great for studying explicit and recursive sequences. First, let's start by adding a recursive arithmetic sequence. Let's have u sub n plus 1 equal u sub n minus 3. And let's set u sub 0 equal to 10. We can change our first term index by going into our options and replacing the 1 with 0. Once you have your sequence created, go down to Plot Graph. Here we can discuss how an arithmetic sequence is related to a linear function. Let's go look at the table. The table here works similarly to the Grapher app. You can see the first 10 terms and can also edit any n value to quickly find any nth term. Let's find the value of the sequence when n equals 21. I hope that this demonstration showed you some of the many ways that NumWorks is the perfect calculator for AP Precalculus. If you are ready to get started and want to explore the calculator more, you can request a free sample calculator. Simply head to numworks community to claim your free calculator. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at contact at numworks.com.